Okay, everybody, this is a pretty short recording because uh, the material we cover here uh, in this lecture and also in class is brief. Uh, we are going to use the extra class time for you to work on your uh, team financial reports. So all I want you to know from this class session is to know the significance to nonprofits of the following revenue sources, private fundraising, government grants, and commercial activities. I want you to learn about how these different government sources affect the way nonprofits operate. Um, this comes from a great study that I really like, and basically the author looked at three different revenue sources on the left, private fundraising, government sources, and commercial activities, and then looked at how much volatility was introduced from these, from these funding sources, whether or not the goals of the nonprofit were displaced by these funding sources, and also looked for any process and structure effects and how nonprofits change the way they operate. And so what we learn with pri private fundraising, for example, is that private fundraising, first of all, tends to be characterized by connectedness with large donors, meaning that it's not the general public that's giving lots of money. Typically, it's usually they may be giving some, but it's often large donations coming from family foundations or large individual donors. This actually creates quite a bit of volatility. Um, it seems to be desirable that you get a lot of money from large donors, but the problem with large donors is they can change their mind very easily. And so you may be relying on a, on a, a repeated grant being allocated over multiple years that a donor has promised you. And if the donor has a financial setback, that could all go away. Or if they change their mind, that could all go away. Or if they get divorced or remarried, they, that could all go away. There are all kinds of things that can change donors' commitments. And so the reality is that nonprofits that rely heavily on private fundraising see quite a bit of volatility. Um, and in fact, there's a lot of volatility with private fundraising as a revenue source when it comes to the economy generally. But the other problem with private fundraising is there's a lot of goal displacement, meaning the nonprofit managers have decided, hey, this is the cause that we want to pursue. We want to help youth in Utah County. <clears throat> and you might pitch to a large donor who says, you know, I like what you're doing but I'd rather you helping youth in Emory County. And in fact, I have $5 million to help you do it. Um, that creates instant goal displacement. The nonprofit managers all of a sudden are wondering, boy, could we operate in Emory County? I think we could. And they think through the implications of that. And then they decide, hey, we've got $5 million to do it. Let's go do it. And now all of a sudden, the, the goals of the nonprofit have shifted dramatically to, to respond to the, to the interests of the donor. Um, and so this can be problematic. Um, I don't think donors necessarily want the wrong things. Um, and this is an idea we've talked about a little bit in class and we'll talk about more. Um, but it's important for managers to understand that uh, money talks when it comes to nonprofit missions. Um, there is an interesting effect that's resulted from foundations becoming more formalized is that uh, a lot of foundation grant requirements have gotten more complex and has created structural and process changes within nonprofits. And so our, we'll have a little table here that'll build up. But what you can see is that volatility from private fundraising tends to be high. Um, there's strong goal displacement. And foundations in particular have pushed for formalization and business administration type um, operations within nonprofits over time. And foundations require a lot more professional behavior from from the nonprofits that they support. And so it's changed the way that nonprofits operate internally, really just making them act more like businesses. Okay, let's talk about government sources. Uh, government revenue sources are a little less volatile because of slow policy, policy change, but they can be punctuated moments or swings caused by political shifts, um, both creating excess funding or drying up funding. Um, some of you may have worked for programs that, that receive government grants and saw big changes take place. Um, I know that nonprofits in Utah that were relying heavily on uh, VISTA and AmeriCorps uh, grants saw that uh, dry up quite a bit when the Tea Party took over Congress. And so that's just one example of how a pretty stable funding source can all of a sudden be unstable. And so it's a weird kind of volatility because it's not swinging all the time, but there can be punctuated moments where it swings pretty heavily. Um, government sources don't usually cause a lot of goal displacement except in the early stages. Uh, usually what happens is a government, uh, Congress passes a law allocating money for a particular activity and a whole bunch of nonprofits will spring up into existence to take advantage of that funding. 
So the government might say, you know, we really care about STEM. We want to see a lot more uh, uh, science, technology, engineering, and math education happening in schools. And we're going to allocate $250 million nationwide for this process, for this kind of education. Well, there are a lot of existing nonprofits who will reach out to take advantage of it, but there will also be entirely new nonprofits that will be created just to take advantage of this grant funding. And as far as process and structure effects go, government grants require a level of bureaucracy that rivals the government itself. Um, we're going to talk about this more in class. We're going to talk about government sources in a whole separate class session. But the uh, essence is to understand that government grants are very burdensome. And so <coughs> applying our table to this, volatility tends to be generally low, but then occasionally high when there are policy changes, uh, political changes. Goal displacement tends to be the initial stages, um, and there's a lot of bureaucratic processes that are, that are imposed on nonprofits who take advantage of this funding. So last, we're going to talk about commercial activities. And, you know, we talked before in class about how commercial activities have been fueling the growth of the nonprofit sector because donations have stayed pretty steady. Government grants first ignited the growth of the sector in the 60s through the 80s. And then what ended up happening is when the Reagan administration shifted things from a grant-based funding system to a reimbursement-based funding system, nonprofits shifted to relying on earned income or commercial activities, and then it opened up doors for them to engage in all kinds of other commercial activity. And so the essence of this is that uh, nonprofits have been able to grow as a sector as they've been selling more goods and services. And what's great about commercial activities is they tend to be less volatile because nonprofits typically enjoy stable markets for whatever it is that they're selling. And there was a lot of fear when the shift was taking place about goal displacement. The nonprofits would become commercialized in a way that would distract them from their missions. But that hasn't happened contrary to expectations. The reality has basically been that nonprofits have been able to serve at their missions and do it in a more sustainable way because of a reliance on commercial activities. And as a result, business methods are now very common and have changed the way a lot of nonprofits operate. They operate much more like businesses than they did, say, 40 or 50 years ago. So volatility for commercial activities, according to the research, is moderate to low, and goal displacement is weak. And there is a lot more business administration and rationalization, meaning that it's meaning that a lot of nonprofit activities um, on operations are now subject to the core idea of profitability or sustainability, where it's less about heart and more about um, sort of uh, rigor to make sure that the activity is worth continuing. So anyway, so these are the three different sources of revenue I wanted to talk about and the way they affect nonprofits. For your financial report that you're doing as teams, you're actually going to look at the revenue sources that the nonprofits you've chosen rely upon, and you're going to be able to analyze or identify how these revenue sources affect the way that the nonprofits operate. Okay, thanks very much, and we'll see you in class.